on this episode, handling false flags. Hey everybody, this is the quarter show and we're discussing handling false flags, which I'll explain here. I'm sure you've, you've run into this. Uh, you know, Ben and I were just talking about today, in fact, um, how, you know, there's, there's, you got sales books out there, sales trainers, things like that. And a lot of people go over technique. They go over like, they say this, you do that, you know, and here's how you close and here's a technique and here's this and here's that. Here's what makes you great at selling, uh, in my opinion. Uh, there's a lot of data out there, conflicting data, things like this, but here's what makes you great is understanding yourself as a human and understanding others as a human. You know, and if you understand the behavioral patterns of how people are, you know, obviously you want to, you, you need to know how to sell. You need to know what goes into selling and what's involved, but you can't negate the fact that it's H to H, human to human. You are a human and you're dealing with other humans and this is not, you know, there's no workaround on that. You know, you have to really understand how humans operate. And so one of the things that people do um, is, and this could be in any capacity, this, you know, in life and things like that, whether it's selling or whether it's some other thing, you could be talking to somebody about going to the movies and, you know, and, and instead of, you know, if, it, if it's a movie that you want to go to, instead of the person saying, your, your friend saying, I don't want to see that movie, you know, right out the gate, they say, or they, maybe they don't want to go to the movie even, instead of saying, hey man, I don't, I don't want to go to the movie. I heard it got bad reviews. Yeah. They say, I heard that, I heard that one got bad reviews and um, I need to check my calendar that night because I think that, um, some kids, you know, coming over. The kids are sleepover, maybe, um, or I'm pretty sure my uh, maybe my car. I think my car needs to get an oil change, actually, so I can't I can't be there on that night. You know, and and what happens is that you go in and try and problem solve this thing. Like no problem, you, I'll I'll send an Uber for you. Um, oh, that's okay because I'll we can get a babysitter. And you keep solving the problem. You keep solving these false flags, right? You keep solving the problem. You're like. They keep spitting out an excuse or justification or something, and you keep solving it. Except you're solving false flags, right? And you can't get anywhere solving false flags. And so you really have to understand human beings. You have to understand yourself, and you have to understand other human beings and realize that there's something behind the false flag. There's something that they're not saying. They're not being totally honest or forthright. It's not that they're not an honest person. It's that this is a human nature thing that people do. Um, I think people don't like to express. They don't like to, you know, be blunt. They don't like to hurt people's feelings. They, they, they do this thing because they think it's a good play. You know, for me, I'm not that way. For me, I'm just blunt. I just tell you right away. Um, but. But I've done this exact thing. A lot of people do this kind of thing. This is a common thing. You have to watch out for these false flags that people do. And instead of just for, so taking sales, you look at sales, instead of just signing the contract, and when you're at the asking stage, closing stage, instead of signing the contract, it's like, you know what? Um, you know, uh, email just got you know hacked or whatever and um, can't access the proposal haven't had a chance to look at the proposal yet. Or, and, and I was just traveling, I was on an airplane um, for the last you know, 85 hours uh, somehow, and can't, yeah, haven't had a chance to look at the proposal, right? And then, and then, then the next thing is like, you know what? <laughs> you know, you're, it's like, a holiday. you're like, oh, okay. And then, and they're, so they're like, call you Thursday. You're like, yeah. okay, I'll call you Thursday. And then you call them when they, hey, uh, you know what? Tomorrow is a holiday. So everybody's going to be out, and then I won't be able to look at the proposal. And it kind of goes on like this. I'm sure you've experienced this. Um, and you keep trying to handle the problem. Yeah. You're like, oh, that's okay. Oh, I understand. Okay, cool. Then we'll talk Monday. Or you try to keep solving the false flag, except solving a false flag is a fruitless activity. So then you have to find a way to get around the false flag and go, okay, they keep hitting you with false flags. So now it's like, 
you have to understand humans enough to go, hey, hey Chuck, um, great. So outside of one, you're not looking at the proposal um, and, you know, and, and considering tomorrow this holiday and things like that, just forget those for a second. Outside of those, hey listen, regarding the price and regarding the, the timing and, and our work and the examples that I sent, um, Number one, are you know, are you happy with the examples that we sent or that we looked at in terms of the project or the you know the creative structure of this? Are you satisfied there? Do you like that? Okay, good. You know, in terms of the pricing, is this within the budget that you thought or whatever? And you guys are good to go. To, like, let's say you did sign off on this today. Are you gonna you know? Are we good on this part? You know, and you start pushing and feeling for where that where that objection, where that resistance is, and you'll get something. They'll say, you know what? Um, honestly. The budget's more than I want to spend, and I haven't had a chance to actually bring my partner in or sell Tom on it or something. I haven't talked to Tom. I don't know if he's on board because, you know, I kind of have boundaries on what we can spend. Anyway, the point is you're going to push on it. You're going to sort of overstep a little bit. You're going to push on it, and you're going to get some feedback. And I was telling Ben earlier today, it's kind of like a, a submarine sonar system, right? You put out a signal, and you, and you, and you get you get a feedback, it bounces back, the signal bounces back, and you know that there's a mountain there. And think about it like this, think about it like this. So, so you, you start to get, you think you've got an agreement, you think things are going in the right direction, and then you start to get these concerns, reservations, and objections that don't quite add up, right? And so you go, okay, so I know that those aren't, the, these things aren't right. If I keep addressing these, we're not really gonna get anywhere. I'm not getting anywhere, I'm spinning my wheels. Now you do, and you've been talking about this a lot, especially the past couple days, you're going to have to get yourself into a conversation that takes, as salespeople, we know what the uncomfortable conversation would be. We know what we would say that would make it uncomfortable. Not like rude, but we know the thing because we're sitting here thinking about it. Yeah. We know that there's an objection and we're going to have to, we're going to have to move the conversation past comfort for ourselves and the prospect a little bit yeah. in order to shake loose. You help shake loose yeah. what the actual thing is. So for you, it might feel a little uncomfortable. For right? example, right now, I've got, yeah. I've got, I've got, I've got a awesome a client, and they're going to do their second video, and we're, we, you know, I talked to them, and now we're texting, and I haven't heard from my partner yet. Now I know the partner is a phone call away. I know the partner is a cell phone call away. Maybe even in the same room. I actually don't know that. So I'm in the next conversation, even though awesome client, loves our work, he, tremendous feedback. Hey, so I know this is, might be, you know, like, however I'm going to state it, I'm going to state, like, I, I need you, Mr. King of your own kingdom, who runs your own life, who I'm not in charge of, I need you to call your partner. Yeah. I'm asking you to call your partner to see if we're okay on this next project. And if we are, can you initial off for me? Or, or even just challenge it, you know? Hey, hey, listen, what if your partner says no or related to your partner or related to your partner, some, something, and you sort of stir the pot a little bit because on then, that and push back. Yeah, because then then you go like this. Then you get something, right? So the, you go, what if the partner says no? Now, a lot of times, and, and you know, we've been through this and you've had this all in this, partner says, oh, no, the partner's not going to say no. I just need to run it by him and da, 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 or whatever. But partner says no. And we don't get to do that project. We get to do this other thing that we were going to do, but not that project. Well, at least now I know. Now it's on the table, right? I've taken it past yeah. that comfort level so that the real, the truth can come out. Yeah, if the partner says, no, uh, we're not doing it. Sh oh, shout okay. out to, uh, FYI, shout out to Grant Cardo. And he, he came up with that one that I know about. What if the partner says no? I just want to kind of put that in there. Check that book out, by the way. Uh, Sell or Be Sold by Grant Cardo. It's a great book. Um, and True. that's one of the handles. There's a Grant Cardo handle. He's a master of like the clothes handles and things like that. Definitely check that out. But... Um, that's where I first heard that. It was like, what if a partner says no? And I, I thought, wow, that's, that's, a good, that's a good handle. <laughs> that's a good handle. So definitely check that out if you haven't heard about them. You know, yeah, look. but there is an example of taking it past the comfort yeah. level so you can, you can get to what, wherever we're going. Yeah, well, the, Let's get the point is it's like you, you want to handle the false flag. You want, you want to sort of overstep. You want to sort of get some kind of feedback and then go from there. You know, and, and, and just make sure that you're not handling false flags, handling false flags, handling false flags, and you keep going down this path and the deal's not closing. Right, you got to get to the root of the thing, handle that, right. and get it closed. And humans happen to be experts at doing these false flag things, you know, over and over and over again because they don't want to say what's really going on, you know. And 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 so they kind yeah, of they're not liars. I mean, it's it's yeah, they're not trying to be liars, but they do it. They just do it. 
you know, people do it, humans do it. And the reality is, it's like, even if you know you shouldn't, or even if people shouldn't, you know, it yeah. doesn't matter. The point is, there's certain things humans do, yeah. you, know, you certain things you do, you have to be aware of that, you have to be aware of what they're gonna do, and you have to be able to sort of read between the lines and understand this, and then you can you can sort of navigate the deal better, and you can get to the close, you know? But handling a zillion false flags is not gonna get you there, and I've trained tons of sales reps that have gone in and say, now they're handling this, and then they come back, and now they say <laughs> this, and they, and they keep trying to handle it, and you're like, the deal's not going anywhere, yeah. you know? And then they're not pivoting and getting to the root of the thing. So, you know, always ask, if you start getting false flags, try and take them out of the equation for a second. Just bench them, say, okay, cool. So outside of like having a budget meeting or outside of talking to your partner or outside of blah, you know, and kind of get those out of the way. Say, listen, do you have any any other, you know, go through a checklist to any, any, any of this, any of that, how's this look, how's that look? You go through a checklist and you wanna fill it out and see, is there any reservation here? Is there anything that you have attention on that maybe is not totally, you know, you're not totally sold on in order to get it done? And it's make it safe for them to communicate something that they're gonna say, you know, the truth is the, the budget was a little bit more or the this or that. And then you can handle the thing that's actually hanging it up and then move to the close. Yeah, yeah, all right. Well, hope you like that. Hope you, hope you, uh, you know, enjoy the show. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe, which I believe is now over there. <laughs> uh, YouTube moved it. I noticed this the other day. I, I'm always going like this, oh, but yeah. I think it's there. So go ahead and subscribe. Share it with your sales team and, uh, and get them to subscribe too, and we will have more coming at you soon. Thanks.